So we've been getting a quite a bit of questions from you guys about how to plumb a dual quad system. So we ran down here into the shop and grabbed our display units with a dual quad setup. And we want to show you how to plumb a fuel delivery system. A lot of the ways that we plumb the fuel system with these systems, with the dual quads, is completely dictated by what kind of fuel delivery system you're using. So if you're doing this on a lower horsepower application, um, I would say somewhere in the 700 horsepower or less, you can do it in a very simple format. Then it could also be very complex and then run through external regulators on your much, much higher horsepower applications. So let's jump in, look at our fuel inlet ports and what kind of setups that we can do with the system. All right, so the throttle body EFI systems if you look at one individually are all the same. This stands for our throttle body EFI for like from the Go Street all the way up to the Go EFI 8 1200 horsepower. We have these three ports right here, which are an inlet, and then our one back on the driver's side rear, which is a return. These fittings will come out. They're tightened from us, but for demonstration, we loosened them. If you wanted to feed from the front, you could swap your fittings around and feed from the front. On dual quad applications, this is kind of nice because it allows you to route your fuel lines however you like. Um, so you can feed both from the front on the passenger side, front and rear. If your throttle bodies are really close, you want to avoid the center. If you have a tight package altogether, we also have banjo fittings, which will allow you to thread in place that allows your fitting to go straight down. That's a nice way to make a nice little compact setup. We also have those for the return. So if you need a return banjo, we got those as well. Now, let's assume that you're doing one of these on a um, 625 horsepower naturally aspirated application, and you're using one of our 340 liter per hour intake pumps. A big thing to note with that is the regulators on our throttle bodies can flow up to 340 liters per hour. With that said, you only need one regulator in the fuel delivery system to regulate that pressure. So we could block off one of these regulators. Every kit comes with a block off plug. We can take off our return off of a unit that we're not gonna use the return. And we could put our plug in. And then if you're trying to get even more room, we also do have delete kits for the regulators. So that's another option that we have. But with this setup, the way that you would hook it up is you would run your fuel line up to the engine, you would use a T fitting, you would T off and you would feed in to each of your throttle bodies. And then you could run a single return. Again, this is with a 340 liter per hour or less fuel pump, we could get away with running a single return. Now, if you're trying to stay compact and simple, but you have a higher flow that you're wanting to run both regulators, you can do that as well. So if you're doing one of our big fuel pump modules that are dual pumps, you would want to run both returns. You would probably in this case want to go an A and 8 forward and then split off and then do the same with the return, split back in and go to an A and 8 back to the tank. Another option you have on these really high horsepower applications is block off your, regu your regulators and the throttle body altogether. If you want to, you could just put the plug in, but then run a remote mount regulator. This is one of our high output, large regulators. We give you both AN8 and AN6 fittings. So this one's kind of plumbed to where you would run your AN8 up. You have your two outlets. Your two outlets can go to each of your throttle bodies and you have your return. So that would be a great way to support upwards of about 1100, 1200 horsepower is with a remote mount regulator. So that kind of covers different types of fuel delivery um, plumbing routes that you can do with the throttle body. Some of the cleanest ones when you have it really, really tight to each other is go ahead, get yourself some banjo bolts. I think the most common that I see is passenger front on both of them removed either getting two banjo bolts or <clears throat> you can do one banjo bolt in the center where you have a really tight space. There we go. So you could run your banjo bolt, you could run your fuel line straight down. 
that's on top of a blower. It'll be above your blower. In the front, you can run your inlet fitting as a standard inlet fitting. You can get another banjo bolt, and then you would just tee in with your fuel tee. And then off in the back, we could run another real slick little banjo bolt, which again, these guys are available on our website, both feed and return. But we can thread them in on the back and you could have a nice clean and tight fuel line configuration. These also work really, really well if you're trying to use like a factory air cleaner and you need to get a drop base over the, the throttle bodies. But that kind of more applies for um, stock type uh, air filters. So the Mopar kind of guys have a lot of um, clearance and tight configurations there that'll help with that. But that's a couple of ways that you can plumb the fuel delivery system. Just to touch on it, the Go EFI 8, the 1200 horsepower system, does have a 340 liter per hour fuel pump. You need to flow more than 340 liters per hour to support the system itself to give enough fuel volume for that 1200 horsepower. So with one of those, when you get above about that 700, 750 horsepower range, I would recommend doing your dual feed inlets. So feeding both through the front, blocking off your return and running a regulator. So a single feed in, dual regulator feeds to each side of the throttle body. So that's a quick little tip for the dual, um, dual feed inlet on a 1200 horsepower but that will pretty much cover any kind of complexities that you may go into when plumbing one of the throttle body EFI systems. Otherwise, with all of our lower horsepower application setups, it's nice and simple. Fuel line in, feed, return back to the tank. Couldn't be any simpler. I hope that answers any kind of questions that you guys have for the dual quads. And I hope that answers a little bit for those high horsepower applications as well.